change. I think maybe winter blew in, but uh, we are fortunate that harvest has gone well for everyone and it's been a safe one and that's what's important. Um, I, we're not in the same position. I've got a friend in Montana that uh, moved from Arizona to Montana like two weeks ago and they've been there less than a week and already had their first snow. They have to understand Arizona and Phoenix has not been below 100 degrees in 150 days. And it was 27 the day the morning after they arrived in Montana. So I'm quite in that boat, but it is good. Uh, a couple of things to keep in your prayers as we move through this week. Uh, Laura Lilly is in the hospital with COVID. Uh, he's on oxygen. Um, so keep your prayers for him. Joe has also got fevers. And so there's, uh, for me, a little bit of a question, you know, does Joe have it as well? I, that has not been diagnosed, but Lauren definitely has. Um, Carol is home. Does anyone know? She is. Okay, that's my thought. I just haven't been able to catch her. She's apparently out doing things, so I have not been able to catch her at home. <laughs> so I assume she's doing well. Uh, Cheryl Phyllis's daughter is recovering from surgery, so keep her in your prayers. And Phyllis as well, because I know Phyllis would like to be with her, but can't as well. Uh, keep David in our prayers because of, of course, Janice's death. There will be a memorial service here at some point. I have no idea when. David will be back sometime this week. I'm not sure when. And our grandson, Austin, is in Qatar and uh, will be, before he goes to Afghanistan, until at least the first of the month. And then he will head, be headed to Afghanistan, but he's in Qatar right now. Doing well, I think he's a young man excited about serving his country and glad he could be there. Um, I think it's interesting to listen to and hear my, hear my son who we've had to experience this journey with him three different times and going overseas um, into hot spots. And now it's kind of interesting to have, on, have Patrick on the same boat that his mom has been on before and his dad. So it's, it makes it kind of interesting that we're journeying this. So uh, you might hang on to that young man as he continues to serve uh, you and me as well as we move forward. I believe that's all the prayers or the prayer concerns I have for right now that I know of. Continue to, uh, well, continue to pray for our community as the COVID numbers seem to be rising a little bit. Um, I'm convinced that's because we're actually being able to be tested in this area. We were not on the first end of testing um, as this all began, and we are now. So um, we're going to pray that we all continue to be wise and be safe. So. Uh, please stand as we continue and begin our service. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us. And for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained servant of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
We'll sing hymn number 558, Earth and All Stars. Thank 
before you, for you. Let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Remembering before our God and Father 
your work of faith and labor of love and the steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not only, not in word only, but also in power and the Holy Spirit with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons you proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, and you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia, for the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Here is the second lesson. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. And they brought him a denarii. And he asked them, whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. These are the words of our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, you have called us to live responsibly in this world. And therefore, we will not shirk our responsibilities to our neighbors or to our nation. But our primary allegiance is to you. You are the mighty God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. While some may challenge you and resist your kingdom, we bow before you and submit to your authority. Rule over us, Lord, with justice and mercy, and empower us to be your ambassadors of reconciliation upon the earth. In your name we pray. Amen. It seems appropriate, almost, that we are looking at this lesson today. It is one of the harder ones again, and it seems like we're kind of caught in a cycle of where I think pastors could get themselves in trouble. Because it forces us to talk about the things that we don't want to talk about. We don't want to talk about money, and we don't want to talk about taxes, and we don't want to be political in any way. And yet, I have to say, maybe this is the right time that these lessons have come up. That it is time for us to all understand clearly what God is talking about and wanting us to do. Because I think sometimes we get caught in this and want to be as the Pharisees. And then we get into some debates on should churches be 501c3s? Should we, should we, and should we? And yet, I think it is time to talk about it. And maybe we have to talk more forcefully. We also, though, have to put in context a little bit. Because really, this lesson is about God's authority. 
And under whose authority do we live? Do we live underneath a government who says, this is how it will be, or do we live under God's authority that says, all, I ha all you have is mine, and you are the keepers. You are the caretakers for now. We also need to put in context a little bit about how much a denarii was. A denarii in that day, let me make sure I've got it right, was one day's wage per year. And later on that was changed to a percent for property owned. Now this tax was placed on as a flat rate on all men from the age of 14, didn't make any difference if you worked, but from the age of 14, you had to pay a flat denarii for every man or boy in the house. And for the women, from the ages of 12 to 65. There wasn't any question. It's just how it was. The tax was to be paid. Now, these Herodians and these Pharisees were trying very hard to get Jesus to flip on his word in a sense. He wanted them to say, he, they wanted him to say, oh yeah, don't worry about, you know, God flipped, Jesus looked it on them. And I think it is for us what is so important to understand that all we have is his. It is looking at a reflection in the mirror and looking at that mirror and saying, wow, everything I have you mean is God's? I can work for it, or at least I think I am. Yes, we are. We work for what we have, but in essence, everything we have is God's. You know, it's been said, and I and I used this example maybe before here, that when we die, we don't take a whole lot with us. In fact, actually, we take nothing but what we were born with, which is our skin and bones. See, I've never yet, in all the funerals I've done, I've never yet seen the U-Haul or the, the town car pulling up with all the possessions of the person and putting them in the casket or in the grave. Never have I seen that. But what I know is God has given you and me the gifts of what he needs us to be and to do. It's like I said last week, and I got, I was all excited, and I still am, because it dawns on me that one of the tasks that one of my friends has asked me to do and said I would be good at, I've already been doing. I never thought about every week what you all receive from the pastor is already a devotion that's almost created. I've been working on a book for three years that I didn't even know I was working on. I might not be the brightest, but it never dawned on me that that's what I had been doing for my people. And for people across the country that I don't even know. It's like, oh. Well, then I'm sitting and talking the other day at a pastor meeting with Pastor Janelle and Father Jim and I was all excited about another event that I, I think we need to think about. And they both sat there and were like, that's exactly what we need to do in our community. You are like on the right track, so now what are we? And I, I'm so glad they said it. They said, what are we going to do? It wasn't just, what are you going to do? It is that God is moving us. And if we will remember that everything we have is God's, if we remember that everything belongs to him, it makes it easy for us to do the work that God's called us to do in our community and in our world and in our space. You know, it's interesting. 
is that I started thinking about the image of God. And where else did we see that reference? And all I have to do is go back to Genesis. If we go back to the beginning of what we've been studying for these few months already, in Genesis 1, 26, we are in the image of God. In, in chapter 5, verse 1, in 9, verse 6, it's all about the image of God. God wants you and me to understand we are created in his image to do his bidding, to do his work in our community and in the context that we live in. From the beginning, God tried to tell us, you are my hands and feet. You are going to. Yes, the text is important. It is important that we give to Caesar what is Caesar's, that we pay our taxes, that we do those things. And you'll hear people say, well, maybe we should pay as much to our communities or give as much to our communities as we do in taxes. Maybe that's so. Maybe that is how we should start to look at how much giving do we give into other spaces. Maybe we do have to rethink you know what? God doesn't want 1% or 2%. He doesn't want 10%. He wants 100% of you and me to share our lives, to share our story, to be with those who are hurting and in need, to be with those that are new in the community. I'll tell you, my friends, it is, it is amazing how God moves. Just this week, okay, for three years, I, like I through the three years, and I've been sending notes out on Facebook and all these things, on pictures, and like I'm the picture queen of our area. And one of my friends, who I worked with for 30 some years in Scouts, said, texted me, messaged me and said, you know what? I think I know one of your neighbors. And I'm kind of like, what? Well, sure enough, sure enough, his wife happened to grow up and is a lady, or was a lady, and grew up in Nanaka's house. Now Terry already knows. <laughs> wow. Isn't that amazing? This is my friend in Kansas City. His wife grew up in Nanaka's house. Is a, I can't remember, cousin, aunt. I don't know how the relationship is. But anyway, with Terry. Who'd have known? After all this time, God puts us where he needs us. He tells the story through our lives and who we impact with. How do we tell our story? And where? But if we understand that we are 100% gods and we give of ourselves 100%, the, the money isn't the issue. It's not about that, friends. Really, this lesson is, is really Jesus saying, yeah, you need to support the government that you live in? Yeah. Hello. How do you think uh, the roads are going to get fixed? Or how do you think EMS is going to come to your house? Or how do you think these things are going to happen if you don't contribute? But I need you to contribute. See, not just 2% or 12% or 100. He wants us 100% to give of our lives. 100%. Not a portion, not a piece. See, in some ways, the words really for giving are also to bless. To bless. See, you and I are blessings, but we are by far anything but right all the time. We are sinners all the time, but because of God's blessing on you and me, are saints to serve. We are saint and sinner all together. God has done a wonderful thing for you and me. He tells us the story. He gives us his story that we share it with others. 
it was interesting as I was going through my notes of things that and sermon critiques and that kind of thing, I came across this. And I thought it was interesting. And I want you to think about that this as we as we read the first article of the Apostles' Creed, which is I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. As we read that together in a little bit, think about this. I believe that God has created me, me, and all that exists. He has given me and still preserves my body and soul with all their powers. He provides me with food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all I need from day to day. God also protects me from me in time of danger and guards me from every ill or evil. Go back to me. All this he does out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy. Though I do not deserve it, Therefore, I surely ought to thank and praise, serve and obey. This is most certainly true. It is what we need to remember, and it's the reason we say the creed every week, is to remind us that all we are is God's. Everything is about us. But if it's all about us, it's about what we do then with it. Do we sit in our house and say, oh, I can't? No. It means we pray. It means we figure out how can we give. I have friends that, because of health and issues, feel like they can't do anything. And I'm like, the best thing you can do is be my prayers. My prayers. Pray. Because we need it so badly. Our leaders need prayer, especially now. We each need prayer all the time. See, there is something for everyone to do. There is something for everyone. Whether you be a student and learning, whether you be teachers teaching, working at the, and owning lumber yards, farming, counseling, working retail, healthcare, military, bookkeeping, accounting. And sometimes we start to feel like though, as we age up, we're just not worth anything anymore. Oh, my friends, we each have a gift. Nothing else that gift, and it is not at the bottom of the list. The prayers of our community should be at the top of the list. The prayers should be at the top. It's an honor blessing for the community. See, the creed actually does tell you and me and reminds us we are gods. We are to go and do, to be and care and love each other. Find those connections. Where is it that we impact the community? How do we Tell the story. Amen. We will sing hymn number 528, God of Grace and Glory in the Gold Book.
great God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. O oh Lord, we do pray for our world. Let peace ring out, O oh God. Let leaders be silent and listen. Let minds be open. Let goodness and mercy go deep into the hearts of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for those in California and Colorado and Arizona that there may be relief from the fires. For those in Louisiana, let them have relief from Hurricane Delta. But for our leaders, again, to be silent and listen and let divisions be mended. Let your children stop and hear the words of grace and peace. For our military who serve here and abroad, keep them safe. We lift up to you, to your arms, Austin, this day, and ask for him to remain safe. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our communities, that we take the time to care for each other. Let our prayers be lifted to all who suffer with COVID and all disease. Let the teachers, students, counselors, all healthcare professionals be lifted in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, we pray for those who suffer. We lift up Cheryl, Phyllis's daughter. We lift up to you, Carol and Lauren. Lily and Stan and all others we know this day that need your care, Lord, in your mercy. God, we hold the family of Janice Shaw, David's sister, in our prayers as she has come home to you, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, open our hearts this day to all the cares and needs of each other. You are an amazing God, and we long to serve you with our whole heart, our mind, and our soul, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us sing what the vineyard says when we bring forth the offering. Because there is one body. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Amen. Now the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for that salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant which has been shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as you as we sing and then as you get ready for communion. And all who are baptized are welcome to communion.
you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks.